Oh, this is going to be a fun list, isn't it? Ah, oh, well, let's face it, some things are just inherently dark, and the subject of murder has indeed crossed paths with wrestling several times over the years. Careers cut short, families left abandoned, and the ugly act of taking another person's life on display. So let's plow through and look at these horrible cases as respectfully as we can. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com, and these are seven wrestlers who were murdered. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, ding. Done. Number 7. Riki Dozan, 8th of December 1963. Way back before New Japan and All Japan Pro Wrestling were on the scene, the Japanese Wrestling Alliance ran the area. And at the head of this burgeoning promotion was Riki Dozan. This guy was the man of the hour, but unfortunately his time was cut short when he was stabbed at a nightclub. The blade that he was stabbed with was soaked in piss, which caused the wound to become infected and he later died, despite the wound not appearing that serious. The incident was no accident though, as the JWA was partly funded by the Yakuza crime syndication and the man sent to do the job was from a rival boss. Ricky Dozan was simply used to send a very powerful message, and I don't think that message was, we don't clean our blades. Number 6. Bruiser Brody, 18th of July 1988. Scheduled to wrestle Dan Spivey on a card in Puerto Rico, Bruiser Brody was called into the shower area by Jose Gonzalez, another wrestler before his match, to talk over some business. Obliging Bruiser walked over and, following a short scuffle, was clutching his stomach in agony. He'd been stabbed in the gut by Gonzalez. Tony Atlas reportedly tried to help paramedics lift Brody downstairs and load him into a waiting ambulance, but it was all in vain. Medics had been unable to get to the building for close to an hour, which proved disastrous for Brody. He died in hospital from the stab wounds. Number 5. Ricky Lawless, 30th of November 1988. Ricky Lawless was only 28 years of age when he was killed by gunshot on the 30th of November 1988. A stalwart of the Mid Atlantic region's independent scene, Lawless had also dipped his toe into helping others break into the business. Most notably, he helped train former ECW star Axel Rotten. Yet no one is really sure as to who actually killed Lawless, as some claimed it to be his former tag team partner. Others said that 22-year-old Raymond Michael Schwartz was the shooter. It was even reported in a documentary made on the event that it might have been an incensed husband who shot Lawless after he was found cheating with his wife. However, Schwartz was the one pegged as the gunman and then sentenced to first-degree murder. Number 4. Tank Morgan, 15th of August 1991. Born in 1933, Morgan flew under the radar for years following a brief period of time working in the old WWWF. Tank's biggest claim to fame happened in 66 on December the 12th. Inside the hallowed halls of Madison Square Garden, Morgan lost a two out of three falls match to the legendary Bruno San Martino. It was easily the most notable moment of his career. The other, sadly, was much grimmer. On the 15th of August 1991, whilst walking his dog, Tank was gunned down in a drive-by shooting. Details are relatively scarce on whether or not Morgan was simply caught up in the crossfire, but some accounts seem to suggest that he was the victim of mistaken identity. Number 3. Dino Bravo, 10th of March 1993. When Dino Bravo bleached his brown hair blonde and launched a new World's Strongest Man gimmick in the mid-1980s, he also changed his ring style. Gone were the technical nuances that had made Bravo a success in his native Canada, and in their place was a new power-based style. That strong man character would become a hallmark of Dino's run in the WWF. After winding down his career in the early 90s, Bravo retreated to Montreal and began training aspiring wrestlers. On the side, it's also rumored that he became heavily involved in a cigarette smuggling ring. And that caught the eye of the Mafia. Bret Hart claimed that Dino once said his days were numbered, and on the 10th of March 1993 he was shot dead in his home. Regardless of all the allegations though, the murder remains unsolved. Number 2. Chris Adams, 7th of October 2001 After Chris Adams' short-term girlfriend was found dead following a drug-slash-alcohol overdose in 2000, he was indicted on a manslaughter charge. Adams had actually passed out too, but he survived the overdose and had to wait out to find if the courts considered him guilty. He'd actually never find out the jury's verdict. Engaging in a heated and drunken argument with friend Brent Parnell on the 7th of October 2001, Adams was shot in the chest and died shortly afterwards. Parnell was acquitted of all charges when he claimed that the gun shot had happened through self-defense. This was a tragic end to the life of a man who once helped train Steve Austin. And number 1. La Parquita and Expectrito II 35-year-old Alberto Perez Jimenez and his twin brother Alejandro would ultimately regret inviting two prostitutes back to their hotel on the 29th of June 
2009 following a show. Both, going by the names of La Paquita and Espetrito II respectively, were established Mexican mini-stars in the AAA. Yates became the victim of a spike attempt gone wrong. One of the prostitutes, allegedly from a group of women experienced in knocking out and robbing men, administered a lethal dose of drugs to both siblings. News reports suggested that the same dose wouldn't have proved fatal to people of a larger stature. Unfortunately, both wrestlers died and were later found by hotel cleaners. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below. And if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though. But it might be.